Taking a live look from Washington, D.C. right now. Today, of course, is Inauguration Day. You can see the uh, the band getting all ready to play at 9 a.m. our time here. Uh, Joe Biden will become the 46th president of the United States. Of course, security on top of mind out there. There's something like 25,000 National Guard troops on hand to make sure things, you know, don't get out of hand like they did a few weeks ago. And right now we have former special agent for the FBI and author of the FBI Way Inside the Bureau's Code of Excellence, Frank Figluzzi, with us to talk more about security. Good morning to you, Frank. Good morning, Eric. Thanks for being here. So how secure is the inauguration ceremony here today uh, compared to years past? I mean, tens of thousands of troops. Uh, is that, in your opinion, necessary to have out there? Well, there's no question that security is exponentially larger and harder today than ever before. With regard to the numbers of troops, upwards of 25,000 National Guard, that's not even including all the police agencies, federal, local, state, Yes, it is a risk-driven, intelligence-driven threat that they're facing. They know things that even we don't know, and I think that those guard, uh, those guard uh, service members are absolutely necessary to make this a hard target for anyone trying to disrupt our democracy today. We've been showing video of the Capitol riot, and according to the FBI, more than 200 case files have been opened, and more than 100 arrests have been made in connection with that Capitol siege. Um, do you think that that was preventable. Uh, a lack of security um, was happened on that day a couple weeks ago after the president's speech. Yeah, we're all asking the questions that uh, demand some answers. And so I'm calling this insurrection not an intelligence failure so much as it was a failure to act on available intelligence. The intelligence was there, and we've learned that the FBI shared their intelligence concerns about violence with the Capitol Police and the entire Capital Region, even NYPD's intelligence unit told the Capitol Police, you're going to have trouble there that day. So we need an independent commission in Washington with no dog in that fight to tell us what happened, at what level was that security posture, that insufficient posture directed, what went on, who knew what when, we need some answers. Well, who's supposed to give those answers, Frank? Is it the uh, Capitol Police chief? Is it the administration? I mean, who needs to answer those? Well, I, we could rattle off a list of people that had their finger in this and need to explain to the American people why certain actions and certain postures occurred. So we'll, let's, let's start with the Pentagon that initially said we're not going to use National Guard for this. We don't like the optics of it, mm. allegedly. Let's look at the sergeants of arms at the Senate and House, who have now both resigned, right. by the way. Right. Of course, the chief of police, of course, FBI, DHS, Metropolitan Washington Police, all of them need to tell us what happened. And the big question, was this orchestrated from on high? Was this something that was enabled and facilitated, even possibly by members of our own Congress? Right, so divided. Um, as we enter this new presidency here today, in just a couple of hours, you know, uh, President elect Biden, soon to be President Biden, has, has touted healing and unity. Uh, you know, former FBI agent, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, on how to get there? Yeah, I think a couple of things can go on simultaneously here. We already saw a great posture. I think Biden is doing and saying the right things in terms of setting a tone. Last night's memorial for COVID victims, for example, today's uh, church service with members of the Republican Party, including Mitch McConnell, all taking the right steps but let's be clear here, while he's doing that, we've got a domestic terrorism threat in this nation that will not go away. Violent extremism is entrenched now in our society. So you don't heal an infection of violence, you don't heal a medical infection by covering it up and hoping for the best. You've got to address it and treat it head on. And that's not just a law enforcement problem, that's a problem for media, social media platforms, and Congress to legislate appropriately to help law enforcement deal with this ongoing threat. You touch on a lot of these security issues in the FBI Way book behind you there. Uh, where can people learn more and where can they get that? Now, I wrote this book to help leaders at all levels, um, at, at the family, corporate, and national level, learn how the FBI operates at a high level of excellence under stress. You can get the book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or anywhere you purchase your books. Frank, really appreciate your time, your insight, and your analysis here this morning. Have a great rest of your day. 
You as well, Eric.